Hey guys, it's uh, Sad Crow Man. If this is your first video from me, I am so sorry. Um, I'm really nervous to make this video, uh, but I can't move forward on this channel until I do. So sorry, comments are off, but you gotta understand since I'm opening up about something so vulnerable to me, it's not in my best interest to have comments on right now. Today we are talking about my mental health, which I've found to be completely unmanageable lately. This is my desk. Don't ask why there's an oven mitt. This is my trash desk. <laughs> okay. Down the hall. Whoop. Oh look, there's my merch. Huh. Advert for my merch right there. And the last thing I need to know is what thousands of people on the internet think about my PTSD. I <laughs> I have no delusion of thinking I'll get nothing but support. Plus, I don't have the time or energy to waste on moderating comments, and I figured most viewers would rather have content than comments. So during this time when I work on my mental health, I may turn off the comments on certain videos that I don't feel like moderating. Uh, the alternative was to leave YouTube entirely, and I can't do that because, you know, capitalism. So please see this as a favorable compromise and not like a punishment for my viewers, please. I, that's not my intention. But if you do miss the community and you are 18 years or older, you are welcome to my Discord. Uh, to get an invite, all you have to do is toss me a dollar on Patreon and you get a lifetime membership to the Crow family. Uh, the only rules are don't be a dick and don't be a creep. Oh, and be 18 or older. Uh, in the background, I'll be painting my villain protagonist, Elisha Walker, because it, it, it's just oddly fitting. Let's just put it this way. I created this character by taking all of my worst traits mental illnesses, traumas, and self-hatred, slightly amplifying them and putting them into a villain who I torment in a book and bully in videos, which probably says a lot about me <laughs> and my uh, view of self. Hold on, I have to let my cat out. But Spee, but Spee, I see you waiting in front of the door. Why don't you take your little paws and open it yourself, darling? Little <coughs> I'm still getting all over my bronchitis. That's not why my throat's raspy though. My throat's raspy because uh, anything I do to my throat is makes it raspy. It, it's just how it is. So anyway, I'm sure long time viewers have noticed that I'm, I'm not as open with my life in my videos lately. I used to share story times where I went to lots of detail about my life. I was pretty much an open book. But yeah, that's all changed over the past year and I'm not sure how to summarize it all for newcomers. I can't say much about my childhood because last time I did a story time on my childhood, it was ad restricted for graphic description of child abuse. <laughs> I didn't even get into the bad stuff. I wonder what my life would be like if CPS went by YouTube's advertiser friendly guidelines. There'd probably be a lot more kids in the system actually. Anyway, I'll, I'll just drop some hints, I guess. Uh, I was emotionally blackmailed into a non-consensual relationship in college back in 2013 where everything we did together was against my will and that's when my life really went downhill. Uh, I don't feel safe anywhere or with anyone. My family's kind of messed up. My grandmother wore red to my grandfather's funeral. That was iconic. I took a selfie with his ashes. I think he's watching over me. One of my triggers is the sound of things being banged around in the kitchen. Uh, but my biggest trigger ever is intimacy, especially when I'm on the bottom. Uh, any kind of sudden loud noise or sudden movement or, or getting screamed at, loud noises like that will freak me out. Um, and at this point in my life, I find even neutral conversations with other people to just be incredibly stressful as my autistic traumatized ah! has no way of telling who has my best interest at heart and who is willing to hurt me to get their way. And last year, unfortunately, I lost my insurance and all my savings trying to survive homelessness and I have been unable to get help for the past year. Uh, I did reapply for government insurance, so here's to hoping I get it. I mean, yeah, I'm a spiritual person, yes. But there is no yoga routine, no mindset management, no crystal that is going to pull me out of fight or flight mode. I need medication for this. That's just, and that may sound harsh to other spiritual people, but it, you know, you, you can't turn to God or whatever for everything. Sometimes you do need medication. I'm kind of sick of the, uh, the third eye calcification fear mongering. 
like, yeah, there's links to, like, certain things, like fluoride, to the third eye calcifying, or should I say the pineal gland, but there is no evidence that the calcification of that gland stops you from being able to receive psychic messages or whatever. Just, please, for the love of God, please stop talking people up, getting their f***ing medication. I went off script there. It's just, it's something that pisses me off about the New Age community. Stop talking people out of taking medication they f***ing need! Okay, I, I, I got a little main. <clears throat> anyway. So, I've been trying my best to hide it because I don't like it when people worry about me. But yeah, yeah, I've gone through several traumatic experiences in my life. And I don't think I can handle one more traumatic experience. I, I'm, I'm just at my limit. I have no idea who I am anymore because my personality is just so different. And I, I know you can hear it now. Even though I'm reading off of a script, you can just hear it in my voice. I'm not the same person I was. I'm just, I, I have no idea who I am. Okay, back to the script. Where the f*** did I leave off at this goddamn script? Oh, that's a little ironic. Every time I make a video, I feel like I'm no longer being my authentic, albeit professional sh shelf self, but I'm acting like my old self just to keep alarm bells from going off, and of course, for the comfort of others. I'm, I'm sure that last outburst made a lot of people feel uncomfortable, but... You know, and I'm going off script again. <sighs> I need, like, those blinders that horses have, like, on the side. <laughs> okay, anyway. Of course, my old self had to put effort into being calm as well, because this has been, like, an ongoing problem for me, but it's gotten worse lately, so I didn't used to have to put this much effort into staying calm. I've, I've just lost all ability to control my emotions, so usually I lock them up inside myself, you know, like, like the movie Frozen. Conceal, don't feel, don't let it show. I've always done that to a degree, yeah, but now it's gotten to the point where I just- I can't hide it anymore. Strangers notice, so God knows I can't fool you guys much longer, if- if I even had y'all fooled, which I probably didn't. And I've changed a lot since I first started my channel, in some ways for the better, you know, I've matured quite a lot at least, but not all of the changes were good things, I'm afraid. Granted, I'm still pretty good at masking, and no one has any idea the depth of what's going on in my head. Like, on the inside, my emotions are like an uncontrollable storm. And it's just, like, since I'm locking it up inside myself, nobody has any idea what's going on in there. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm in complete agony, like there's no hope left and the world is crushing me. And other times I just feel totally empty inside, just detached, like I'm not even a part of this planet. And other times I feel like I'm spiraling into a rage that will just never be sated. And, and let's just be honest, I'm probably better off hiding those emotions. Especially the rage. If I let loose all that rage, it would absolutely drive people away and possibly get me arrested. Uh, or worse, thrown into the psych ward again. That was traumatizing. And worse yet, very, very expensive. God, that was expensive. And I'm sure you all have noticed I'm not uploading videos as often as I used to, and when I do post videos, there's not as much research involved. And I'm mostly going off my already existing knowledge that I picked up in college and such, and, you know, from my already existing memory banks, whatever. And this is for two main reasons, and that's one, at the moment, I'm just, I'm not excited about this channel. I hope this feeling passes eventually. Like, I'm not even excited that I'm close to hitting 100k, and I feel like I should be. I remember how excited I was when my channel hit 10k, and for those of you who don't know, 100k is kind of a big deal. The second you hit 100k, the CEO of YouTube breaks into your house and beats you over the head with a silver play button. I'm just kidding, Susan, don't come for me. Anyway, in that moment, you are suddenly a real YouTuber. <sighs> But honestly, it makes me anxious to have this many eyes on me. Some people seem like they were born for the spotlight, and I just marvel at how well they handle attention and humans. But me, I, I just feel this overwhelming anxiety every time I go to post a video on this channel. I, I don't know what the f*** I'm afraid of, but I can tell you that I am convinced nobody actually likes me. I know it sounds ridiculous because, um, it's just kind of illogical, but my brain has convinced me that anyone who says Anything nice about me doesn't actually exist. So where do the nice comments come from? I don't know. Intrusive thoughts say those comments aren't actually there. And for some reason, my attention just doesn't latch onto them the way that it does negativity. And I'm just 
I'm dead co f convinced that every human on this planet despises me. And I don't know why, because logically speaking, the world is in a bad place right now. Everyone's dealing with their own thing. I don't think anyone has time to give that many fucks about some stranger at the grocery store. But here I am, ruminating over and catastrophizing every single social interaction I have. <coughs> Excuse me. Both online and off. Online is scarier, actually. Of course, what can I say? I grew up in the 90s with commercials like these. Cool. Sure. Ask her where we should meet. <laughs> it seems like you're chatting with somebody just like yourself. Not always. Even if they show a picture of themselves, it may not really be who they say they are. It could be somebody dangerous. So never get together with anyone you meet online without first checking with your mom or dad. Used to I would blindly trust everyone because blah blah autism, blah blah theory of mine, blah blah unable to imagine that other people could possibly have bad intentions because I don't. But you know, following a recent string of traumatic events, uh, I, I'm just now completely unable to trust other people. I don't know how to tell if someone is using me or if they truly enjoy my company. So, yeah, any kind of human interaction has been hard for me, especially on the internet where I have no idea who could be watching. And, you know, with intellectualization being my coping mechanism, I don't like to not know things. As a side note, now that I've been forced to reveal my face, I don't have a boundary between my personal life and my online life anymore, and I have to be very careful about everything I say, so... Excuse me. Hiccup. So the second reason I haven't been uploading as much is the main reason. And it's a bit darker, at least for me, because losing my mind is like my biggest fear. So my post-traumatic stress has reached the point where it is affecting my ability to process and organize thoughts. My mind used to work really quickly, and I'm not comparing myself so much to me when I started writing video essays in 2017, but like before I even started my YouTube channel, we're talking like before the 2013 trauma. I was in college then to be a teacher, and I could read about a topic for, say, 20 minutes, stand up in front of a class, no script, and talk about it for an hour. No gaps, no delays, no problem. And my professors consider me to be one of the best speakers out of whatever class I was in, but nowadays my head is full of molasses, and I struggle to articulate a basic sentence. I constantly jump topics, sometimes mid-sentence. In other words, I'm effectively stupid now. I mean, I was already playing on hard mode from the get-go because I've diagnosed autism, ADHD, bipolar, and probably undiagnosed dyslexia as well. I mean, yeah, I used to be smart, but I didn't exactly hit the genetic lottery. God nerfed me. Basically, that's what it boiled down to. God nerfed me. Yet, I have my whole life to develop coping strategies for those conditions, and the hypomanic cycles I used to have were actually incredibly helpful when it came to getting stuff done. So it wasn't all bad, but after last summer, just everything is worse now. My thoughts are slowed down. It's all, they're all scattered and dark. And sometimes I get so f***ing keyed up that it's a challenge to write or speak in complete sentences. It's not too obvious right now because this is scripted, which is no easy or linear feat for me, by the way. But it, it, it took me like months to write this, but the unscripted version of this video was like a tangled up mess that was like an hour long explained nothing adequately, and an iPhone 8 error prevented its upload. And for those of you who don't know, I used to put a lot of effort into researching for my videos. For example, when I made my two-hour analysis of the allegations against Melanie Martinez, I read their accusers' entire Twitter. Like, I read the girl's entire Twitter from start to finish, and believe me, it was a ride. Loved the elf face. <laughs> now, I spent over a month on that video, and hours of each day went into researching. Nowadays, I don't have the mental stamina for that shit. I mean, I'm not suddenly completely incapable of doing it if the need arises. I managed to do a pretty good job on the Melanie Martinez NFT video essay. A couple of minor things did escape my attention, but it, it takes a lot more effort now than it used to. So all things considered, I'd say I did a pretty good job on that video. And what with my emotions being the way they are, I'm sure you can imagine that it's difficult to focus on work. And <laughs> what did I get as a reward for my hard work? A bunch of angry teenagers yelling at me because they assumed I meant teens haven't heard of Madonna. Which makes no sense and I literally never f***ing said that. Why the f*** would I say that? Because that makes no sense. Oh, God. The loudest teenagers are the dumbest ones, I swear to God.
<laughs> of course, there were a lot more teenagers who were probably part of my core audience who said they thought it was a reference to a TikTok meme and weren't familiar with the Madonna song I was talking about. So good on you guys for paying attention and not twisting my words. <sighs> I have no right to speak. My generation of teenagers was even worse. I swear to God, we were like evil. Like literally evil. But anyway, back to why I haven't been uploading much outside of Patreon lately. I, I wish I could say that that's all there was to it, but my memory has also been negatively impacted by all this. So not only do I have fractured memories of traumatic events, but I encounter memory issues day to day. For example, while the trauma was going on last summer, I was a server at Waffle House, where you generally expected to bust your own tables and clean the dishes as well. There would be times when I'd be washing the dishes or whatever, and then I'd have this oh fuck moment, and I'd rush to clean off that table, only to find that not only did I already clean it, but that there were people sitting there waiting to be served at their cleaned table. And I know logically I had to have cleaned off that table. God knows my coworkers wouldn't have done it for me, but I had no memory of doing it. But I knew it, ha it had to be me. This, this was a pretty much daily occurrence, and it was incredibly surreal. You know, today the stakes aren't quite as high because I'm at home writing scripts and drawing, but the general occurrence of not being able to remember what I have and haven't done, it can get really fucking frustrating. Writing scripts takes a lot longer than it used to because, like, I'll start writing a sentence and then I do not finish said sentence and I jump around to do something else. Or mid-sentence, I forget what I was writing and I fill in the blank with some intrusive thought and I don't notice and I move on and then I come back to it later like, whenever I feel like working on it again, I'm like, what? This sentence makes no f***ing sense. And it's not just the new memories that are f***ed either. I look back on my old memories different than I used to. Like, basically, I can look back on any social situation I've ever been in and find something shameful or threatening about it. Like, sometimes when I'm alone, I'll actually just scream. Like, I will scream from an intrusive memory. It's like everything is tinged, tinged, excuse me, in this darkness now. And I, I don't have any memories that I look back on and laugh or smile. Except maybe my first roommate trying to kill me. I will never not think that was hilarious. She did not do a good job. Did you consider trying a knife, maybe, you dumb bitch? But yeah, the longer I spend in my head, the harder it is for me to get things done. But I can't seem to stop ruminating. I want to get out of my head and live my life so badly, but instead I'm just stuck in my toxic ass mind. And what's playing is a lot like Bojack Horseman's stupid piece of shit monologue, except like meaner and more personal. I can't begin to explain how much I hate myself, but I guess that's what happens when you're raised by a bunch of malignant narcissists who are constantly putting you down. You grow up with an inferiority complex because anytime you assert yourself, they beat you down and make you feel like you are worthless. <sighs> but I digress. So yeah, my, my whole family, they had this extremely invalidating, how is that traumatic reaction when I would tell them about my time as a hobo, but I I'd like to see those privileged f**ks live through what I did for one. And for another, some of my symptoms are physical as well. And if it wasn't traumatic, why are there so many holes in my memory? And why am I experiencing so many physical symptoms that I have no explanation for other than post-traumatic stress disorder? You know, light sensitivity is a big one as direct sunlight will temporarily obscure my vision to the point where I can't function. Like, I can't draw because I can't see. And my eyes are dry as fuck. And if I'm keyed up enough, I'm so sensitive to sudden movements that peripheral things I'd normally not notice, like my eyelashes, nose, and cheeks, will give me jump scares. My vision it also sometimes blurs a little, which it kind of surprised me when I found out that all these vision things are PTSD symptoms. It's... It's because vision is connected to the limbic system, which is what's activating my fight or flight bullshit. It's rarely blurry though, thank God, and when it is, it's more like things just aren't as crisp as they used to be, but I can still see. Otherwise, I would totally lose my shit because art is everything to me. But sometimes I do get paranoid that I'm not actually getting better at blending and it's just that my vision is shit. I'm also physically very tense. Like, I'm, I'm just sitting here at my computer talking into a microphone, but my heart is racing like I just ran a marathon. And it's like that most of the time. It's not always totally racing, but I do always have elevated levels of anxiety at all sober times. I only know what it's like to not feel anxious because alcohol. Even in my sleep, though, there's no peace. I have nightmares every night, but that's nothing new. It's been like that for a decade now. You have to tell me what it's like to have a good dream because I don't remember. 
I don't know what it's like to wake up in a good mood. <sighs> but, yeah, when I'm drunk, the intrusive thoughts about my traumas are still there, but they're tamer. The anxiety doesn't completely go away, but at least I'm not fully in fight or flight, so for a moment I finally have enough peace to, like, think. And the fact that I think better when I'm drunk than when I'm sober is kind of sad, really, but there's a silver lining, because this implies that if I'm put on the proper medication, my brain fog will clear up and someday I will once again be able to organize my thoughts and make <coughs> that doesn't suck. I just have to be patient and hope that Uncle Sam gives me a f***ing <coughs> break and lets me have my insurance before I go on, like, a full psychotic breakdown or something. And naturally, PTSD makes my other conditions, such as gender dysphoria, harder to deal with. For those of you who are new here, I'm not technically diagnosed, but I know I have it and my doctor knew I had it back when I had one of those. I frustrated the hell out of her by refusing to answer any questions about gender dysphoria because I knew if I didn't answer any questions about it, she couldn't diagnose me with it. And I was trying to get into the army under the time- at the time, excuse me, it was under the Trump administration. <laughs> I ended up not getting in anyway because guess why? My mental health? Nah. The tattoo on the back of my neck and the slight curve to my spine. Scoliosis. Funnily enough, the army was the reason I stopped taking my medication to begin with. I was on Lamotrigine, uh, generic for Lamictal, I believe, to treat my mild bipolar disorder. Just an FYI, uh, apparently it also helps PTSD, according to some googling, which I found interesting because I didn't realize I had PTSD at the time because I was very closed mouth about my trauma and I would never talk about it with any of my doctors, but that's beside the point. I never talked about it with my therapist either. Anyway, the army allows bipolar people, but I I had to prove I could live without um, the Lamictal and my ADHD medication for an extended period of time. I don't remember how long. Of course, I was in a good place back then, especially compared to now, so I didn't need my medication. I wouldn't have called it ideal, obviously, but I functioned well enough without it. Most of my depression came from not being able to find a job, so having a career goal helped. However, it became clear to me that I would never be able to afford to get that tattoo lasered off, and it would have f***ed me off if I dropped all that cash on it, on, like, the removal, you know, only for them to disqualify me for a slight scoliosis curve. So I shifted gears and decided to focus on what I really wanted to do, which was to write and illustrate novels. I mean, I was more willing to shoot people in the desert than I was to deal with entitled customers, which I says, I suppose says a lot about me and my patience with people, but I wouldn't exactly call that my dream life. I think all of us who have wanted to join the military are a little ah! f***ed up. <laughs> anyway, you never know where the army sends you anyway. With my luck, I could end up somewhere horrible, like Baltimore or Detroit. If anyone would make me work at a retail store just to spite me, it would be the U.S. Army. So yeah, yeah, writing was the better life goal. <laughs> Following the pandemic, though, and my book flopping, I had a change of heart, which both of those happened at around the same time. I had a change of heart and decided to go back on my medication. However, there was some confusion over my appointment because it was post-2020, and I was sitting at home waiting for a live stream appointment, basically. Whatever, the, the telehealth, I think they call it. And then I called, and I'm like, hey, where the f*** ah. is my link? And the absolute ah. head of a receptionist told me that my appointment was supposed to be in person, and that I was late, and that I was a delinquent patient, and that I was banned from the office. I had to pull my face away from the mic a little bit there. And since my doctor doesn't own her own practice, there was apparently nothing she could do about it. I only knew about all this because she's also my sister's doctor, so my sister asked her about it, and my doctor said there was nothing she could do about it, and that... <sighs> She hadn't even been told that it had happened. She just thought I was a no-show with no explanation for it. Gotta love the American healthcare system. Fun fact that American healthcare system is probably 80% of why I wanted to join the military to begin with was so I wouldn't have to deal with uh, Medicaid because it does put an income cap on it. I mean, you, I earned technically too much on paper while I was homeless and even though I was homeless, I got my insurance taken away because of the amount of money I made on paper. Actually, let's explain this. Um, so I got a stressful job at the local deli uh, following the book flopping, uh, got an open relationship, saved up $7,000, tried to move out, got traumatized again, ended up homeless, stranded 1,200 miles away from my hometown, and I couldn't just camp out somewhere because my I had my YouTube equipment and both cats with me, and I couldn't risk losing that. You know, my data and cats, mostly the cats, totally irretrievable. Cannot retrieve them. That's irreplaceable. So I had to work my ass off to afford a $3,000 a month Roche hotel to house my cats and equipment, but I couldn't find a place to live. 
because I kept getting rejected by apartments. So my stress kept mounting as I lived in fear of losing everything. And yet another traumatic experience, you know, I gave up. I returned to Kentucky in hopes of getting treatment for my PTSD. But since I made a lot of money on paper, I lost my insurance. Any money I had saved was immediately spent on vet bills because one of my cats, knock knock, got very sick at the Roach Motel and almost died, but he's doing better now. As he should be, after I dropped about $2,000 on his survival. But he's not fat anymore, he's mostly loose skin and that's very sad. But he's still fluffy and cute. And happy. Anyway, I also dumped my boyfriend, uh, didn't want to go back to my local deli job because I can't work with him without committing murder. And that's where I met him, was the deli I worked at. And I, I, just, I can't work with my ex-boyfriend. I will choke him to death. So now I make a couple hundred a month at most because I can't find a new job. Also, my ex owes me like $3,000 because he didn't help me pay the hotel like we agreed. And I'm considering legal action because we worked out a repayment plan and then I never heard from him again. So yeah, now I'm broke on paper again. I cannot find a job yet again. And I'm begging Uncle Sam to please give me my goddamn ah! insurance back. So I can f***ing function because I'm not making enough money to cover my expenses, which is saying something because I am living rent-free currently uh, in my child of divorce bedroom at my dad's house. And I have been forced back into the closet because he is not a fan of trans people or men who love men. Yay. Every time I hear my dead name, I want to go on a rampage. Yeah, nobody in my uh, personal life uses my correct name or pronouns. It, it makes me want to smile really bad. I love it. Anyway, th this has been my problem for years, though. You see, people keep telling me, cut the toxic people out of my life. Go no contact. Move out. And believe me, I, I know that's what's best for me. Freedom is all I've wanted my whole life. I've been looking for ways out since I was a child, but no one would listen. Fast forward a bit, I go to college against my will, cycled through several majors over the course of seven years, long story, and now I have no savings and in debt for a degree I only use to make stupid video essays on YouTube. Which, that, that does not make me $40,000 a year, to say the least. So that's why that lost $7,000 of savings and the $3,000 my ex owes me is such a big deal to me. I had to fight tooth and nail for everything I've earned in my life. I didn't make that money overnight. I, I didn't start out with advantages in life to begin with, like, like some people do. And, because I started my life out in debt. And not only did homelessness put me in traumatizing positions, it f***ed me over really hard as far as escaping abuse goes. And taxes just about did me in this year. Sure, I wasn't in a great position before, I was ready to push through and make it, but unfortunately I trusted all the wrong people, so I'm stuck under the thumb of the people who abused me as a child and who still continue to make my life a living hell at the age of 30. Because I was born into poverty and physically cannot escape it. You know, systematically, the, the way the world works, it's just really hard to break free. So I figure my only real chance at this point is if my channel just miraculously picks up again so I can start saving money again. But before I can rely on myself again, I need to get medical treatment for myself. I can't work if I'm going to spend the rest of my life in fight or flight. It's just no longer doable. Like, I, like when I said I can't handle one more traumatic experience, I meant it. And I, I just, I need treatment. I need treatment. <sighs> Anyway, the only thing I've got going on for me, I guess, is my own determination to beat this. I really want to take all these negative experiences and emotions and use them to improve my narrative and composition for my book re-release. You know, like lemons and lemonade, whatever. However that goes. Which, for those of you who don't know, I released Cry for the Devil in the winter of 2019, so right before the thing that happened in 2020. And, um... Before it was ready, I released it before it was ready because I was overcome with anxiety as I failed to get the book where I wanted, to, wanted it to be before the planned release date, and I was overthinking it. So instead of pushing the release date back like most people would, I published an unbaked cake, basically out of fear of angering people by making them wait. And I've hated myself for that every day of my life since. Basically, I felt like there were some things that needed to be added to make the storyline more cohesive and drive it to the finish line. But I was listening to some bad advice that my book was too long and that you shouldn't have multiple points of view characters, and I'm thinking, f*** ah! that. You know, my genuine readers want Eredi and Elijah's perspectives, and the book needs their voices for the ending to work. The solution was not to end book one on a cliffhanger and then throw in a bunch of prequels. The solution was to break the stupid writing rules I learned in college and have a book with multiple points of view. Because, you know, writing advice means nothing if it's not helping the book you're writing at the moment. 
So that's my advice to anyone here who's a writer. If a writing rule makes your writing worse, break the rule. Anyway, and then of course, you know, when the book got a poor reception, I just jumped to the conclusion that it was because my book was absolute irredeemable trash because of the lukewarm and negative reviews. Not realizing that what really happened was I, I failed to reach my intended audience with this channel, you know, it was, the marketing was bad. People were reading the book just to support me because they like my clean, sanitized YouTube personality. And, or, well, I guess it was clean and sanitized before today. Ha <laughs> ha! everything! It, you know, and then they'd get disturbed by the content. <laughs> Naturally, you know, and leave a negative review. I admit, I kind of don't understand this. I gave no indication it would be a love story or have likable characters. It, it starts with a kidnapping. I wouldn't exactly call kidnapping a very forgivable thing, but yeah, <laughs> I guess that's, I guess it is what it is. That, that's what I get for trying to market a gothic tragic comedy to Melanie Martinez fans. Though to be fair to myself, she does use a lot of dark humor, so I guess it's not too much of a stretch. But her stories have a lot more heart than mine do. <laughs> Cry for the Devil isn't even the scariest story I've written. <laughs> Oh well, oh well, oh well. Those of you who have been watching from the beginning are like, whoa, mood this is a bit of a mood swing. I have whiplash now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm trying my best to organize my thoughts and get treatment for my PTSD so I can make the re-release everything the original was supposed to be to begin with. Uh, it's kind of my main goal in life. I've started a side channel for the audiobook, which will be released for free here on YouTube. Um, on the side channel, I mean, after the re-release is complete. Meanwhile, on the side channel, I will talk more about my characters and writing, and there will be some gameplay stuff with my characters. Uh, give that channel a follow if you're interested in, you know, goofy and dark humor, gray morality, trauma, uh, toxic people trying their best and still failing, deep subtext, uh, toxic family dramas, camp goth billionaire girlfriends, meeting your friends because you witnessed a murder and then they handcuff you and take you to Waffle House because they're drunk, you know, themes like that. If you want a romance, not the channel for you. Uh, there's a video up right now on the side channel, as a matter of fact, that has William Brown Quinonez's backstory, creation, and psychology, so I'll have that linked below. It's an hour long, so here's to hoping I'll meet those dreaded watch time hours, because, spoiler alert, I am not close to monetization at all. I think that's stupid. I think if you have a channel that's you've been working on for years, and you start a side channel, that side channel should start off monetized. I have already proven my worth as a creator, and it's not like YouTube's not getting money, you know? They are putting ads on those videos and getting paid for them, but I'm not seeing money for it, and that kind of makes me mad. But yeah, anyway, if you do want to read the unfinished version of the novel, I am still selling it technically. The link's in the description. I, I say unfinished. The the badly published version, the <laughs> whatever. I haven't taken it down from Amazon is my point. Just know that if you do read it, I am completely humiliated by it. And some minor details may change as I adjust the book to be told from multiple perspectives. Uh, I'll make a video later detailing changes that may be made and what why it's taking so long and stuff. But yeah, I'm working on a prologue from Eredi's perspective and I already feel like that one prologue makes the book like a thousand times better already. It really starts it out on the right foot because starting with William was a bad idea because even though it starts, even though it already comes in like really early on, it still starts with William. So I think that does not help the fact that a lot of people think the story is going to be about William when in reality he's more like the Nick Carraway and already is the Great Gatsby. Or no, that's a little mean. Maybe Eredi is the Daisy and Elijah is the Gatsby. <laughs> Whatever. I'm making, what's the word? Analogies that don't really work. <laughs> anyway. Where did I leave off on the script? Oh my god. Uh, I think I started out mid-sentence right here. It really starts off on the right foot, blah blah blah. So if you can hold off on reading Cry for the Devil, your patience may pay off in the long run. But I understand some of you want to read the first version, so I've kept it up, even though it embarrasses me. Uh, at least when people buy my book, I get a couple bucks. Unless they return it right after reading it, which is something people have done to read it for free, which, um, if you did that to me, enjoy the bad karma, ah! squad. Burn in hell. Hate you. Anyway, of course, I know several people who read it uh, only did that to support me financially. I do kind of have feelings about that. 
Uh, you know, I don't want to be that person who people only support because they feel sorry for them. I want to create a work that's really great, that resonates with people and makes them feel heard. Um, so I'm not saying that you can't have an opinion about it. That's not what I mean at all. I'm just saying uh, that's why I started the side channel so I can really reach that target audience of people who grew up in broken homes and want broken, morally gray characters to relate to. Um, it's not that I don't appreciate the subscribers I have now. It's just that it doesn't seem like there's a big overlap between the subscribers of this channel and people who are interested in my creative works. You know, I mean, this channel is mostly video essays and sometimes YouTube poop and other random ah! shit. I don't know what this channel is. <laughs> but, yeah, so hopefully the side channel will remedy that and hopefully hopefully i will by some miracle manage to get some damn medication in my system before i explode i'll continue to give mental health updates on this channel uh, but they will have the comments off again the discussion will still be enabled on some other videos patreon and my discord just not on any video where i will have where I won't have, should I say, the mental energy to properly moderate the comments. And if you want to keep the channel going so I don't have to resort to retail again, I'm a lot more active on Patreon than I am anywhere else online, and uh, membership plans currently range from a dollar to three dollars. I know, I'm not exactly going to rake in the big bucks for minimum donations like that, but I want to make it affordable because not everyone can afford to give me like $7 or $10 a month or anything like that. You can pay what you want, but I wanted the bar to entry to be low. So yeah, $1 gets you a lifetime membership to the Discord and the ability to see all my art in high definition. $3 gets you behind the scenes content, mostly for the book re-release, early videos, works in progress, sometimes exclusive videos, etc, etc. It's whatever I can do that month. My, my Patreon is disorganized, just like everything else I do. Uh, I also have a store where you can engage in reckless acts of capitalism, but I'm warning you now, shipping is pricey, um, and sometimes it takes a while. Everything is print-on-demand, which is more environmentally friendly and prevents overproduction. Plus, there's no room in my house for, like, 200 Blessed Bee Mother Cockers t-shirts. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's where the script ends. I, I didn't write anything else, apparently. Uh, I worked on the script for months and I never finished it. Are you f***ing kidding me? God, no wonder I published my book before it was finished. I can't finish anything! What the hell is this? Okay, um, please rate, subscribe, and blessed be, mother f***ers. Have a better day than me. <laughs> and thank you to my wonderful Patreon supporters. And, you know, thanks, thanks to everyone, really, you know, for liking, subscribing, and... You know, everything you've been doing to support my channel, I really appreciate it. Even just watching my videos really helps. Um, and now I'm blanking out, so I guess it's time for me to go. See y'all.